Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagras, and today I have a really fun Skellige deck for you guys, and that is a Skellige discard cow deck. So this is a prize winning cow deck. And the gist of this deck is that you want to discard prize winning cow. Uh, and if you discard doomed card, it doesn't actually trigger the doomed effect, which means that you can resurrect it with things like restore. Return a bronze or silver unit from your graveyard to your hand and set its base power to 10. Then play a card from your hand. So effectively what you can do here is you can discard the cow either with King Bran or with Ermion or with Johnny. And in doing so, you then uh, have it in your graveyard, which means that when you draw Restore, you can then return it to your hand and give it 10 power. And then once you have a 10 power cow, the cow has a retaliation effect. Every time it takes damage, it spawns a Chort, which is a seven strength uh, neutral card. So we have our light long ships. Every turn at the start of your turn, damage the unit to the right of this by one. So we can use the, the long ships or Wild Boar of the Sea to start shooting the cow and spawning Chorts. And that basically allows us to spawn seven strength every turn. So that's the gist of this deck. On top of that, we have the discard base of Morkvarg, Orgyard, and uh, Ceres to allow us tempo with that. You know, we have clan and create raiders which we can discard with things like Lugos or with Ermion or with our clan Drummond Warmonger. We have our three whale harpooners to move units around and then we also have two great swords to synergize with the boats in other rounds. We have one armor smith for repairing units um, if they're under weather. We have three priestesses of Freya for resurrecting which triggers with the Lugos and also allows us to play the long ships multiple times if we want to then res them for the cow or for great swords we want to res them. And we have Dorigare, and Dorigare, he allows us to play a Ekamara or a Drowner, and we can use these to remove blockades. So we, if the opponent kind of moves our units around, we can use the Drowner to fix it. Or if someone plays something in between a spy, say in between our boat and our cow, we can then eat it with the Ekamara. So gives us some options. But yeah, this is the deck, and I've been actually playing it on the Pro Ladder, and it's been it's been relatively okay. I'm three and three. I should be four and two, I misplayed one of those games. So, you know, it's actually going relatively okay. Um, but without further ado, I'm gonna jump into a pro ladder game and I'll showcase this deck for you guys. And if you like this video, do hit that thumbs up button. Patience is not a virtue I am known to have. Mead, for me. <laughs> okay, so up against Amir, which is a little bit annoying because he can place his spies in between your units. But if we can draw out his spies, that's really good. We want to mulligan a raider which blacklists them then we have orgiad and morkvarg so we ideally want to get rid of both of those morkvarg is more important to get rid of than orgiad because we can always play orgiad uh there's johnny which is really nice but we don't have our cow if we happen to draw ceres you can actually discard ceres with johnny and take a gold card from your opponent and that's quite useful uh but we do have discard options for when we find restore and we don't necessarily need to find restore or the cow actually sorry the cow now uh we have restore in hand the issue here is we don't have a lot of boats. We have Wild Boar of the Sea, which is nice. But we don't have any other boats, unfortunately. Um, and we don't have Ermion to try and find them. So it's a little bit tricky with our great swords how we intend to play those. As it is, though, what we can do is we can play... We can play King Ram. Whenever a player draws a card to their hand, boost self. It's Mill. Guys, we're gonna get milled. Actually, mill isn't too bad here. Mill isn't too bad because we can just set up a lot of turns of damage and it's usually okay. So I'm kind of still okay with doing this, even though we know that it's mill. Set at my table I'm kind of okay with this. So we want to discard Morkvarg, Orgyard, and Ceres. We'll get them in the graveyard. Because honestly, the more turns that this goes on, the more points we get from the Wild Boar of the Sea. What do you need me to do? And he doesn't have his, uh, he clearly doesn't have his Avalak. And we can kill it. We have Madman Lugos, so we have options to kill the Avalak. And in the meantime, um, what we can do is we can set up the Wild Boar of the Sea. And start basically buffing Morkvarg. I mean, he's going to half his strength. So it would maybe be better to buff a great sword, but in the meantime, we'll put this here and it can buff him. And then we can always slot something in there. And he's actually passed. Wow. What do I play here? I guess we play one of these. It's not ideal. It's not ideal, but I mean, we're going to have all of our carryover, 
We've got eight cards, so we could probably look for the 2-0 here. He's going to mill us, so we're going to see more boats anyway. We have Resurrect, so we can pull back our Greatsword. So we should be able to actually set a really nice chain of points up here. Especially as we're guaranteed to draw our cow. Because we have... Uh, we're guaranteed to draw our cow because we have... Uh, we're against mill, right? So he's going to be giving us loads of cards anyway. So this is actually pretty decent. The issue we have here is we didn't get our boat. But we can actually discard a boat. Um, and that's going to give us options to try and find one. So, for now, do we want to resurrect or want to play? I think we just play a greatsword. Um, and we'll pop him out here. Like I say, the issue I have at the moment is I don't have any light long ships. But he wants to mill me. So, he's going to have to make me draw into them. And maybe we can actually get a seer with Johnny. If we get a seer with Johnny, that's ridiculous. Come on, buddy. There we go. Just what we expected to see. And there's a boat, which is what we wanted to find as well. And there's the cow. So we're pretty happy now. Uh, I'm going to play the boat first, and then we'll play Johnny and discard the cow. We want to do it in this order because uh, I want to get this ticking, basically. Maybe me discard my other boat. Oh, no. I, like, I have plenty of reses and stuff. Uh, we do need to play our reses sooner rather than later, though. Um, so we'll play Johnny. Do I look like a and we'll discard our prize winning cow. And then, oh, Albrick. Okay, this is interesting. So we're basically helping him to mill us. That is not what I wanted to get. That's not really what I wanted to get. Now, how did that incantation go? So here he'll pick up his, uh, he'll pick up his dude and, and replay him. But what we can do is we can always, we can always kill it with Lugos. So, you know, that's pretty decent. Uh, I'm going to play Restore now. And restore the cow. And then I'm going to play my resurrect. Because I think I want to... Yeah, I think I do want to res here. We'll play my resurrect. Is patient, but she no and insult. I think I res the boat. Because I don't have more than one boat. So if he takes it, that's kind of annoying. So I think we take the boat here. Uh, and we'll slot that there. And this ult should actually pull uh, Ceres as well. Which is pretty nice. So... We're in a nice situation against Mill, to be honest. Like, this this actually goes genu genu genuinely pretty well. Although, actually, I realize I need this boat for my... I need this boat for my cow. You will see it in your dream. Dora Gray is nice. Raiders are kind of annoying. So, we're just going to kill Avalak. It makes his strategy a bit more difficult, basically. So, we may as well get that I set up now. Um, in which case, we discard the... Probably the Warmonger, because we're probably not going to want to discard cards in the future. And we'll just kill that. It means that he has to like cycle it back into his deck if he wants to play it, uh, which he'll go, he'll do here. But you know his deck is quite full, so he's not necessarily going to find it, especially if we choose not to play Albrick. As it is here, I think we play our cow now. Slot him into that slot there, uh, so that we can start cycling basically units. Uh, not cycling units, cycling chorts. When you play a soldier from your hand, boost an ally by two. And so here comes, here comes the chorts, you guys. Here comes the chorts. And the thing is, we can always repair this. I mean, it does put armor on it. But if we repair it, then we're going to keep getting value out of it. So this is a really nice situation for us to be in, in all honesty. Um, I'm kind of really happy with, with where we're currently at with this, with this game. Uh, I guess we move this guy to the back row. Ideally, we don't want to play Albrick. Uh, we can hold on to that and kind of see what happens. We have Ermion, Harpooner, Raider, and Priestess. Like, none of these cards we really need to win this win this game. So we're kind of okay. We're on 93 points, and he's on 32. There is an argument to be made for just straight passing here. Because if we straight pass here, he can't play Albrick, and he can't play Magni Divisions, and we're going to be getting Chorts every round. So potentially, all we do here is just pass. You know, we have 61 points on him. I think we go for it, to be honest. Like, we're getting so many... We've got so many, like, attrition points that he's just not stopping. So if we pass here, he can't play Magni Divisions and he can't play Albrick. So, all in all, this is decent. Ah, Rot Tosser. It's a shame. But we have a 15-point Resurrection target, so that's okay. And we're still getting all of these chorts. 
hailstorm, which spawns another chalk. And the ones are kind of protecting me, so that's good. Because this is the issue with Mill. The issue with Mill is that they need to, you know, win with card advantage. So this is still really awkward for him. Like we're we're seven cards and he's five. Oh, he's gonna take my fifteen, isn't he? Cheeky git, cheeky git. I once lopped off three heads with one blow. That's still not enough points, buddy. <laughs> Even with that, I gotta wonder how he's gonna win this. Like, what is his plan? Because we basically negated his card advantage, I right? Do what I must. Okay, here. What are you going to pick up? The 15. He must be picking up the 15, right? Like, you pick that up because then you have 15 points in the next round. But this is still not enough points, is it? Because he has to pick something up. So if he picks up the 15, that's not going to be enough points. Unless you pick up the Vic of Medic and then just Graveyard Grief me. Like, you have to pick up something small. You have to pick up something with five or less, which means he has to pick up the Vic of our medic. Like, he has to. Ah, oh, so close, you guys. So close. I thought we'd have enough points with the, with the, the, um, chort and stuff. But as it is, we're still up three cards? Four cards. We're up four cards. Death holds no surprise. Oh, I forgot about this. We do not want this many raiders, although we're not really going to discard them, so it doesn't really matter what we go for here. We'll find the priestess eventually, so it's all right. And we go for Savage Bear, right? Savage Bear gives us points per turn. My powers are yours to come Although we're going to find another thing, so actually I want to I want a priestess now, and, and not priestess a boat. I want to priestess the I want to priestess prayer. the great sword. Uh, so that we can get this set up. Because I'm going to find this priestess. Like, this is a given. So we may as well do that so that we can resurrect the boat. And then beat him, basically. That was a lot of cards. Alright, what can I... I can play this to block that. Savage Bear, Wyvern, Akamara. He just gave up. He knew what was coming, like, it was just, it was just too much. And uh, this is what I mean, this deck is surprisingly good, especially against Mill. Mill doesn't really do so well against this deck because you get so many attrition points that they don't interact with, with the great swords and with the cow. Anyway guys, I'll jump into another pro ladder game and I'll showcase this deck in action once more for you guys. There is but one punishment for traitors. <laughs> of course, friend. Okay, so we get Emir. We get Emir all the time. Um, like I say, if it's spies, it's a little bit awkward for us. We have prize winning cow and Johnny in hand, which is nice, so we can use that to discard. Dora Gray is also good. We'll get rid of a raider. And a raider. And actually what we can do is we can discard uh we can discard with Ceres. So the thing is we can discard use Johnny to discard Ceres and get a gold card. So the question is, do we want our opponent's gold cards? Typically, they run Rain Fawn, which means wouldn't be that good for us because we have no spies. Uh, Infiltrator, which wouldn't be good for us because we have no spies. Renew, which is all right. And sometimes uh, Leo. So the question is, do we want, would we rather have their silvers or their golds? And I think in this situation, we'd actually rather have their silvers. So I'm going to mulligan Ceres. But if you're in a matchup where you feel like their golds would be useful, then that is always an option. Okay, so this is where we bamboozle them because they think this is a standard restore deck. Um, we discard Ceres, we discard Morkvog, and we discard Oyed. In they go. Out he comes. We get a timer on our Ceres, and everyone is happy. Please wait, Your Excellency. I'm falling behind. Please wait, Your Excellency. I'm falling behind. So he doesn't have an enforcer at the moment, which is good. Oh, well, there you go. I spoke too soon, you guys. And they always kill Morkvog. This is, they always do this. Like, every time. Kill Morkvog, kill Morkvog, kill Morkvog. Um, which is actually okay for us, to be honest. We are 11 points behind. Um, but because we're going second, that's kind of okay. We can play our greatsword for now. And then look to get set up with some other things. So... 
we'll play this here. We're gonna play this in the back row because then if I do play Wild Boar of the Sea, the King Bran is gonna be getting buffed. I don't want to be buffing a spy because they might have uh, the one that kills spies whose name I forget. Not Letho, not Leo. Yeah, whatever. But they have a unit that kills spies, so you don't really want to be boosting a spy. That's not really sensible. And especially you don't want to be boosting a uh, uh, emissary because they can just Vic of our medic it. So you're kind of better off not doing that, basically. Though you have to be aware that they do have Vic of our medic, so they can try and take your great sword. So you want to be a little bit careful with that. Although usually they just disrupt the buffing by putting something in the way. A highly curious case. Please wait, Your Excellency. I'm falling behind. Interesting. So, what do you shoot? You shoot King Bran. Which makes Wild Boar of the Sea a little bit more awkward. Makes Wild Boar of the Sea a little bit more awkward. Um, we are 20 points behind. So the question is, if we play this, is he likely to just pass? If he just passes, we'll catch him. Because we can use the boosting power. So I don't think he'll pass if we do this. Uh, so I'm kind of happy to play the boat for now. The other thing we can do is we could have played the, the Warmonger into the uh, Raider. We could play the Warmonger into the Raider and so on and then go from there. Create two Lesser Guardians on the top of your opponent's deck. So I'm going to draw into Lesser Guardians. How much of a problem is that? Not really. I think we want to trigger Ceres, to be honest. In which case we discard a raider, which causes him to res, which pulls Ceres, uh, and gives us a nice amount of tempo. On the start of our turn, we're going to gain one more point um, by no the longsword. And this is quite a common strategy: is to is to play Cantarella and and kind of block your opponent. Um, and this also gives him, you know, some options, which I guess he likes, because now. Uh, this is blocked, so I'm not getting as many points. But what we can do is this is where Dora Grey comes in because we can just move Cantarella. And that's an option. Um, and then this guy... Well, he won't get buffed this turn, though, so we don't actually need to move Cantarella yet because he gets buffed at the... Wait, at the start of your turn. So I think this actually... No, I think this shoots him and then he gets buffed. I'm not entirely sure on the ordering here. I think Dora Grey might actually be fine. So we'll take a Drowner. And Cantarella can come party on the front row. Party on the front row with Cantarella! Woohoo! If he passes, it's fine, we get the round. And then we have cow strats for later rounds, which is always fun. The thing is, we do have to be wary of him playing uh, Vicavaro Medic. Holy shit, we are getting so many units out of him here. Peter's not great. Like, what do you reset? There's nothing you really can reset. You can kill Dora Grey, but I'm not going to res him anyway. Like, that's not really as good as you think that it is. Shot my boat. So rude. So we could just slot Wild Boar of the Sea in here. And that's an option. The thing is, if we do that... If we do that, then... It's probably going to encourage him to pass. I think we just do it. Stuff it, put the boat in, and play it out. We still want to play Johnny, and we still want to discard our cow and restore it and stuff. Um, which we'd like to do this turn, because if we can get it in the graveyard now, it means we can just open with restore. Orcs. Well, that's Orcs wood. You get it. Orcs wood. One point down. So we'll play Johnny now. Good grief. And Your discard prize winning cow. And we got Sealak. Interesting. We can actually use Sealak to boost our cow, which is quite funny. So we can use Sealak to spawn an um, uh, ambassador and boost our cow. So I think we pass here, right? We're up a point. Oh no, wait, he's going to shoot me. We're down. We're down a point. Why are you shooting those? They're going to die anyway, you silly goose. You silly goose. The thing is, I'm not going to draw well. And I know I'm not going to draw well because of, of how this is going down. I think we let him have it here. We did get Joachim and Cantarella out of him. Which is 
decent. But on the flip side, he had orcs. A lot of people don't run orcs because often it's a dead card and locks... Like, two locks is good, but sometimes it's just not, so a lot of people don't run it. So I don't run lock counters myself, um, and that can make life awkward. So we're going to draw two of these, which is, you know, fine. Uh, so we'll discard one. Hopefully we get something good. Maybe Ermion. Great sword's all right. He can't just pass because we have units on the board. Is he going to Vicavaro and medic me? He's probably going to Vicavaro me. If I were him, I'd Vicavaro me. So I'll see, like, Emissary. Oh, ambassador, interesting. Hey, interesting sir. choice. So he's drawn his Silak. Which I guess is nice for him. Uh, how many points am I behind? Nine. Okay, so we'll play Restore. We will grab the cow. And then we'll play... I think we have to play Silak, right? If we want to be ahead. Which we do. So we'll play this. I cast myself and upon then, mercy. if we play Emissary, what are we going to pull? A Light Longship, a Priestess, a Raider, an Armorsmith, or a Harpooner? How many points do we need? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need seven points. Which is a risky play, so I guess we go Ambassador. Hail and then we know he's playing Rock Tossers, so we're going to buff Silak. How many reses are we? I think we've only got one tick, yeah, so we need quite a few more. I always find a way in. Ugh, Infiltrator. There's literally nothing I can do about that. Like, he's gonna straight kill it. The issue I have at the moment is that if I go for cow strats this round, I don't really have a win condition for the final round. Uh, but if I play my res now, I don't necessarily have a boat for the final round. So I'm in a little bit of a tricky spot. I'll do as you ask. Leo. Is he going to kill my greatsword? He's going to kill my greatsword, isn't he? Oh, awkward. This is awkward. Modern Freyr is patient. So we have to resurrect she the boat. No we have to resurrect the boat. And we have to just maybe use cow straps. And then potentially win with Ceres. If we can get Ceres down to a few small number of resurrects, then we stand a chance. Okay, he's discarded. How many points am I behind? Five. So I can play this guy. And take the rounds. But now I'm a card down. And I don't have I don't have a boat. And that's where the issue is. Not being a card down and not having a boat. He also has Vilgefortz, which means he can burn my cow. Which is kind of annoying. Can I have a boat, please? Come on. Come on, give me a boat. That's not a boat. Ermion, good. Lugos, not good. Priestess, good. Longship, good. Yes! Oh. Always lucky. Always lucky. So let's set this up. As soon as he sees the cow, though, he's going to just burn the boat, right? But then maybe we draw a priestess. And if we draw a priestess, that's quite good. Your humble servant. Hey, I need that. Rude as heck. Rude as heck. Right, here is the cow. So he's more likely to burn the boat than he is to burn the cow. This is the thing. He's more likely to burn the boat than he is to burn the cow. No door is closed to me. This is awkward. Um Okay. So this goes middle. This comes up. We shoot it. Ugh, I don't think it's good. I think he's going to kill the boat. Yeah, there it is. Meno, that's his name. Which means we can't trigger the points. And then he can Vilgefortz himself and win. Because he'll Vilgefortz the two. Oh, not to be. Not to be. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. That, um, lack of, lack of resurrects, I think, kind of messed us up as well. If we'd gotten a priestess instead of a boat, we actually would have had Ceres, which would have been really nice. Um... But, you know, you win some, you lose some. And ultimately, the cow deck is really fun. You've kind of seen how consistently you can get cows. Because <laughs> he rezzed from my graveyard, Ceres came out. If that had won me the game, that would have been hilarious. Like, if he hadn't accounted for that, that would have been hilarious. But not to be, not to be. Um, and yeah, that's the deck. It's kind of fun. I really like playing it. I think it's really 
entertaining to play and it's not a top tier deck you know but i feel like i win a fair number of games like i never i don't like constantly lose with it and uh, so this is what i'm currently playing on the pro ladder and if you fancy a fun deck to play then skelliger cows is definitely uh the deck i would recommend um beyond that beyond that thanks for watching uh if you like this video hit that thumbs up button let me know what you guys think of the deck in the comments below maybe what kind of changes you'd make um and you can always subscribe to the channel for more Gwent content as well as other games. You can find me playing this deck and more on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jaggerus. Uh, and I'm on Twitter at Jaggerus. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.